Our beautiful planet, Earth, it's home to over 7 billion people. We each have an incredible ability to make one another sick. Fortunately, we have usually, uh, we, we make ourselves sick by coughing, by sneezing, by shaking hands, but we have natural immunity to most of these things. And we also develop immunity from vaccines that we receive. Often when we're children, we don't even know it. <clears throat> but when we're not immune to these bugs and viruses that we trade back and forth, we can get sick, we can get very sick. I'd like you to meet a little girl. We'll call her Jessica. Okay, Jessica has contracted whooping cough. This is a highly contagious disease. It's transmitted by air. There is a vaccine that could have protected Jessica, but she was too young to receive this vaccine. But in many parts of the world, they don't have reliable electricity to power refrigerators that are needed to store this vaccine. This vaccine, it costs 21 cents and it must be refrigerated. In, in parts of the world where they don't have this refrigeration, many people die. In fact, this year, 195,000 children will die from whooping cough simply because we cannot store a 21-cent vaccine where these children live. Right now, in Southeast Asia, there's a mother giving birth. She has hepatitis B. It's a common disease in that part of the world. The chances are high that her child will contract this disease. But there's a vaccine which can protect from this if given to the baby shortly after birth. The vaccine costs 41 cents, and it must be refrigerated. The mother lives in a community that does not have reliable electricity. As a result, there's no vaccine storage. And unfortunately, her child will not get this vaccine in time. Right now, in Africa, there's a yellow fever outbreak. This is a viral hemorrhagic disease. It's transmitted by mosquitoes. There's no cure for it. There is a vaccine that can protect from it. The challenge we have right now is how do we inoculate the millions and millions of people who live in the affected area? And we have to do this in advance of the rainy season because when the rains come, the mosquitoes grow. And when the mosquito population grows, so will the disease. The challenge with mosquito-transmitted diseases is that they travel fast, they travel far. We're actually seeing that right now in the United States with the transmission of the Zika virus. Our current approach to immunization in these areas is sort of like a fire bucket brigade. What we do is we put together what we call outreach programs. We put a team together, they gather up vaccines, they put them in special coolers, they go out into these regions and communities, they try to inoculate as many people as possible, and then they go home. These outreach programs, they're expensive, they're difficult to manage, but most importantly, they're really relatively inefficient. Just imagine how difficult it is to go into a community, gather up everybody, and immunize them all in one, at one time. It's actually the electric cord, which is strangling global health. I've been to clinics around the world. I have seen brand new refrigerators that were donated, sitting in the corner, unused, and they'll never be used because the community does not have reliable electricity to store, to power these refrigerators. There are some really cool technologies out there that can solve this problem. They include one system we call a direct drive solar power refrigeration system. Another is a simple, very high performance, a long-term passive storage container. It's like a cooler on steroids. This can maintain safe temperatures for vaccines for a couple weeks or maybe longer in the hottest of environments. 
As a matter of fact, a system like this can be used as permanent vaccine storage anywhere in the world. There are just too many people at risk of communicable disease simply because we cannot store vaccines where these people live. Okay, enough with the gloom and doom. You know, there's a logic to problem solving, and it begins with first identifying the problem. Next, you have to figure out the technical solution. After that, you have to create the will to fix the problem. And lastly, and actually the easiest step, is you implement the solution. Regarding global health, we know what the problem is. The problem is 1.2 billion people, billion, are at risk of contagious disease because we can't store vaccines where they live. The solution's easy. We just have to cut the cord to our reliance on the electric grid. We have to use non-grid-based refrigeration systems in these communities. That brings us to where we are now. We have to create the will. And by this, I mean the global will. This is not a regional problem. This is not a problem that's just over there. This is a problem that's everywhere, right here as well. It's a problem that requires global will. That's where we all come in. <clears throat> How about we infect the world with this awareness of this huge problem? And maybe, maybe we can create a social virus to combat biological virus. And maybe in doing so, we can save millions of lives each year. You know, Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, that's all that ever has. Let's be that group of committed citizens and change the world for the children like Jessica. <laughs>